and welcome back to devlog. I'm trying something different with this part by adding a funny laugh track behind this video whenever I say a joke or funny thing to really emphasize the comedic tone. So let me know what you think of this new addition in the comments below and in this part I work on a another weapon moveset archetype, this being the melee punching with your fists archetype, a enemy targeting system, and uh, then I just made a bunch of attacks. The first thing I did is work on the new weapon archetype, this being the heavy brace weapons. These are big fists you wear on your fists to emphasize your punching. These weapons are inspired by the combat bracers from Nia, the big fists from Kid Icarus, and the fight club I go to on Thursday evenings where a woman punches me in the face 14 times. Um, the reason I added these instead of the great sword is um, because I kept getting frustrated when designing great sword movesets because the game's uh, general mobility is very fast and the great sword mobility is very slow. So when designing movesets for a big heavy weapon, it was um, very difficult to sort of get a feel of how the game plays combat-wise when the only weapon I have created is a giant slow weapon. So I thought best to um, design one of the faster weapons. This would probably be the second fastest weapon archetype the player can use, and then I can get a better idea of how the game's combat plays in tandem with the movement. So I switched over from the, from the old weapon I made, and I will hopefully be designing for the um, heavy brace weapon archetype for the foreseeable future until that is finished or until it's half finished and then I can work on the ranged weapon so I have a good idea of how the game uh, controls. The design for the Heavy Racer's uh, moveset is very simple. It involves a lot of grappling, a lot of punching, and a lot of kicking. Um, all of your moves are very quick and they have very low range because you're just punching things with your big old fists. But you have a lot of mobility with your moves. There's a lot of quick dashes, there's a lot of spin attacks with you um, doing dance moves as you are using your combat. Um, there's more grappling, which I will get onto later because it's not finished. Um, but the design for the heavy braces is it's your fast punch weapon, do damage by punching things. Um, and that's pretty much it. You want to hit things quickly? pick this weapon. The model of the heavy brace itself is um, something I really quite enjoy quite a lot. They are basically just big heavy gauntlets that go around your hands, but an issue with designing these is that when the weapon is sheathed and unsheathed, this is meaning that this current weapon is active by the player or inactive by the player, it has to completely uh, encompass the player's hand and then go into a state where the um, glove, if it is still equipped by the player but not in active use, um, transitions to being not on the player's hand so they can do things like uh, wall run or grab onto ledges without this weapon clipping into their movement. This was a pretty big um, restriction in how to design this weapon, but I had a pretty fun time overcoming it. What I did for this weapon um, in its animations is that essentially the weapon itself is made in entirely of a few cylinders and when the weapon is drawn, these cylinders will rotate around themselves and shift to be um, encompassing where the hand is and then when the weapon is sheathed, these cylinders will rotate again um, so the front cylinder faces will be um, at the back unseen, the fingers will then curl down and the um, heavy brace itself will no longer encompass the player's hand and it can be um, slotted somewhere on the wrist so it rotates down and s sits on the wrist I guess. There is still the issue of clipping because this is a really big bulky weapon that is essentially just being created into a, a bracelet at this point when it's not in use but overall it's uh, diminished to the point where it's not going to look awful in player movements. I'm a pretty big fan of this design, um, it looks very mechanical and and just um, very robotic looking. It's the kind of design you would, you would see on a mech of some sort or um, things of that nature. Like this is the kind of hand design I would place on a, um, a mech suit. The color design of this weapon, um, I once again 
because it's me, I went with a very bright, uh, gaudy color scheme. It has a lot of um, deep pinkish reds and yellows and oranges. Um, I just like this color scheme a lot. Um, I, was, I was just playing about with the gradient color scheme that I have, and I felt like this was the most suitable and also the coolest looking for the design of the weapon. The next thing I did was work on the attack animations for the fist weaponry. This is the uh, the punchy weapons. Um, the, there is a lot of these, so I will go over them quickly. The light combo is a punch, punch, kick, kick. You may notice that in game, this is um, out of order. Um, in the animation string, it goes from a left punch to a right punch to a high kick to a low kick. Um, I reordered these because of the way I splice up animations. I felt like the um, punch punch into a low kick and then a high kick ending this attack combo reads a lot better for the player um, because you're ending with the heaviest attack of your attack combo. Um, but these are just very quick attacks. Um, they are very uh, quick to start and they have a quick attack frame and they have a quick recoil, um, hence why these are the fastest attacks. But they were fun to animate, they have a lot of motion behind them, um, they are nicely exaggerated while still looking realistic to human maneuverability. Um, they're just very nice punching animations. I'm a pretty good, uh, pretty big fan of these. The next attack is the spin kick attack, which is what it's called in uh, its animation file, but the actual name for this attack in game is called the Boston Breaker, and I will not explain why it is called that. Feel free to guess in the comments, um, you're not going to get it. This attack is a very uh, cool breakdancing move. The player is using their momentum to spin around. They are then having hitboxes attached to both of their feet and they are kicking as they spin around in a circle um, like breakdancing. And then at the end they just get up from the attack. Um, I'm a little unsure about this attack because it has a very um, long length to it. I worry that the attack having this intense length will make it so that it, the attack is never um, desirably used in game, but I suppose um, the the solution to this is just to make the attack do a lot of damage. Um, there is an attack in Monster Hunter for the dual blades that has this exact design feature. I think it's called the Demon Rush or the Demon's Flurry, something like that. It's a very long attack, it does a lot of damage though, and it sticks your character in place. Um, I guess the, the, the idea with the breakdancing attack is that it's a very long attack, but it has the most um, range and mobility, uh, not mobility, the most range and um, circular reach for the player. If you're getting stormed by enemies or you want to do big damage, you can do this attack. The input for this attack is back, right, forwards because the player is moving in an anti-clockwise motion, so the stick input is mimicking this motion the player uses. The next attack combo is your air combos. This is pretty similar to the ground combos, only there is three attacks. It is a right punch, a left punch, and then a high kick, which has a nice little motion as you spin around. Um, these are the same as the light attacks for the ground. The first two punches are just very um, big and heavy, but they're very quick. And then the last one has a, a heavier kick upwards with a longer attack. This attack has a lot of recoil to it, and I think the animation for the recoil is pretty good. You're kind of sticking in air after you do your kick, and then you're moving around and flipping into your recoil, and then you can follow up, or you can continue to flip around and go into your regular movement state. Um, same as the ground combos, they're very simple, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with how exaggerated and silly these attacks look. And I think um, I think they're pretty fun to perform. There, I had a fun I had a fun old time pressing my inputs for this one. The next one is the air dash attack. This is the attack you perform if you press a dash input or a dodge input, as in you're dodging or, dodge, dodging or dashing in midair. And once you're using these inputs, after the 0.6 percentage length of your dash or dodge. Uh, input has passed, so if the dodge or dash air input lasts for one second, um, after 0.6 seconds you can use this attack. Um, and what this attack does is you leap forward, you have your arms backwards, you then bring them forward and do a heavy slash down. This pushes the player onto the ground, the player then hits the ground and recoils upwards. So it's a, a big old, a big old dash um, or smash down 
as af after your air dash. Um, this is one of the dash attacks, so this is a really uncommon one. I can't imagine the player ever desirably using this attack, but I guess if you wanted to dash away from the enemy and then instantly go into a, um, a counter attack, this would be a pretty good um, attack input. I then reworked the way that inputs are read by the player. Um, this is basically just a, another variant of the uh, list function of saving the player's inputs, but now it can more organically read uh, stick inputs. So for example, if you pressed back, forward, forward, back, forward, forward, in that rhythm combo, the um, list would be able to read that the player has done that, and then uh, devise specific attacks based on this input. Um, this is very good for complicated attacks. For example, the breakdancing attack has an input of, um, I believe it's back, right, forward, because you're doing a uh, backwards to forwards half arc of the input because you're moving in a clockwise motion with the breakdance. So your character is spinning in a clockwise motion as they attack. So the input for this attack, because it's a um, stylish one, is the mimicking of this um, input's uh, clockwise motion. Um, this is probably the more complicated one, but this is um, just a way to check if the player has pressed double forward because some attacks have a input where the player has to press forward twice or backwards twice. Um, this makes uh, a lot of a lot of combat attacks easier to perform than just having your uh, rhythm inputs. It's just sort of remembering what stick direction you are supposed to press. However, this is very difficult if the player is rotating with your stick inputs. Hmm, if only somebody, if only somebody has added a feature to make the character stick their rotation towards enemies or towards their current rotation so that stick inputs for attacks could be easily performed. Hmm, I wonder if anybody could code such a thing. The next thing I coded is the enemy targeting system. This is not the lock-on system, this is the player rotation system um, towards enemies. How this works is if you hold down right bumper, which is also the style button, um, this is the button you hold down to perform stylish attacks, so these are your uh, dance attacks, your dash attacks, your any attack that is, has a complicated stick input, you hold right button and you make those attacks. So if we are holding right button, our character will either um, rotate towards the closest enemy based on their rotation. So if a, an enemy is in front of the player, we will lock that enemy as our focus uh, and then we will rotate towards it instead of rotating in our movement direction. If we are locked onto an enemy, this will default to our focus enemy and the player will always be rotating towards this enemy if we're holding right bumper. If we do not target any enemies, we will instead just stick our rotation to our current rotation direction. Um, this is just if, in case there isn't any enemies nearby, uh, nearby and you want to do some fancy moves for your YouTube montage video that you put on Twitter and to show off your game, in case, that, in case you want to do that. Um, the logic for this system is pretty easy, essentially we are just holding right input and then if our current substate is one that can accommodate for enemy targeting. So these are most of our uh, substates. Our rotation will be locked into place, either towards the enemy or towards our forward direction, and we can easily perform uh, complicated stick inputs without having our character move around and have any difficulty in these inputs. Um, the reason I added this instead of just keeping the stick inputs simple is because I wanted a lot of attacks with complicated stick inputs. For example, uh, one where you press backwards and then forwards. But the issue I had when testing is that I would press backwards, the character would start walking backwards and rotating backwards, then I would press forwards, and the stick input would read that we are now pressing left and then forwards because of the way the character has rotated to accommodate to moving backwards. So this way, it just makes it easier to perform complicated stick inputs. Um, the only real downside of this is now I have to do animations for running left, right, forwards, backwards, um, diagonally left, diagonally right, diagonally forwards, diagonally backwards, um, which is not a sight especially difficult. It is just more tedious to set up. Um, but I think this is the lesser two reveals than having a complicated um, movement setup where the characters cannot perform actions as easily. This is just sort of the, the easier way to do this. 
when holding right bumper, we will be in our combat focusing state. Um, this has a few different features. The player will not be able to snap turn, for example, um, because the character is focusing their movement direction so the player can't snap turn because you're focusing on combat in this state so you don't want to be performing any unnecessary uh, movement inputs. But aside from this, the game plays very similarly. Um, ideally, the idea is you're pressing your attack inputs to fight enemies, and then you hold your right button, and then you perform your fancy inputs, and then you can let go of it um, whenever you don't want to perform fancy inputs anymore. I then made animations for enemy focusing. These are your running left, running right, running forwards, running backwards, uh, running diagonally. Originally, I had this idea to use the enemy focusing system to have your character start hovering, and then just have different animations of them hovering left and right and forward and backwards, um, but I didn't think this would particularly read very well, and I also want to have a state where the enemy can, where the player can hover around with button inputs for the left bumper, because that will be the magical um, attack button, but I won't talk about that because that's for future devlogs. Um, so I just sort of uh, made the running animations for each each direction. Most of these are pretty easy. The running left and right is essentially just your character rotating the hips and then the spine um, so that they are running left and right as they would normally but their body is adjusted to facing forward even still. Um, it's just an alteration of the regular running animations. And then the running backwards animations is essentially these regular animations reversed and then edited slightly so the foot placement doesn't look off as they are running backwards. Then the spine is tilted so they are also um, looking backwards as they run backwards. The reason I had the player look backwards as they are running backwards is just because it reads better as an animation. It doesn't look like they are just running forwards in reverse. It looks like they are actually um, mimicking the motion you would make if you were to have to run backwards. Then the diagonal run animations are just um, tilts of these regular animations. Overall, these were um, sort of something I didn't really particularly want to do because I didn't want to um, animate a bunch of directional run inputs this week, but it makes the game uh, look better. I think maybe in the future I will add different animations for running left um, instead of running right just to um, make the visuals look maybe a bit better, like the player um, running left would be more of a strafing left animation, for example. But that's for future devlogs where I want to put off some other work so I animate for a week instead, so don't worry about it. I changed the way that certain things in the game are rendered. All I did for this is add um, more flat cell shading to the uh, models. I made it so that the um, shading color was a slightly darkened color and hue shifted color of their base um, gradient pattern based on a different texture sheet of um, shadow shadows based on the gradient textures that I use. And then they have an outline based on these colors. So it's an outline of the base color um, expanded and darkened. I think this looks pretty cool. I think it um, adds more weight and detail to the character designs and the model designs in game without me having to do anything. I just click the outline button and it looks detailed. Um, I'm not sure if this is the final um, design I want for the um, colors or shaders or material in game, but so far I think it looks pretty cool. Um, what do you think? Leave a comment below. The next thing I worked on was the combat dash mechanic. This is the mechanic when you swing your weapon, you will be automatically pushed towards the closest enemy to you, and for a certain um, degree of movement towards that enemy. This isn't really a major thing, it doesn't actually move the player all that much, it's just a mechanic that um, helps the player actively target an enemy. Um, essentially, if the player was going to be too far away from the enemy once they had swung their weapon, they will be pushed um, further towards it. This is given at a value between 0 and 1, 0 meaning this function is not active, 1 meaning your player is going to be placed next to the enemy once they have performed their attack. 
The way this works is essentially just in addition to our combat movement function, all we do here is we calculate where the player is going to be moved with their push force of their attack, if they are having any push force at all. So when they swing the weapon, when uh, how much forward they're going to be pushed. Um, then we find the direction between this point to the enemy, we find the distance of that, and then we calculate a force to push the player in in addition to their movement force based on the direction towards the targeted enemy, if there is a targeted enemy, if, if there's not a targeted enemy this function isn't called. If there is a targeted enemy we find how um, far away they are. If they are too far away for our range of our targeting, we will null out this distance so the player can only travel in the distance for this targeting, and then we find the force to add on to our player's movement force that will position them um, where they should be to get to the enemy. So if the enemy is 6 units away in the y-axis, we will add a degree of 6 units in the y-axis to their movement degree. The design principle of this is basically just to make attacks a bit easier to land for the player. Um, essentially, if the attack is going to move towards the enemy, this function just runs to make sure that the player will actually um, get towards the enemy that they are aiming for with each of these attacks. The only actual um, combat capability this weapon function has is that for attacks where the player is dashing towards an enemy, such as an attack where the player can move across an entire room to find the closest enemy and slash at them once they have reached the enemy, for those specific attacks um, this is a good combat function for when the player is dashing towards the enemy, but in its general state it's just a pretty, mu um, a pretty good movement option for the combats to have just to make it a bit easier for players to hit enemies, because you don't really have to be uh, worrying about hitting an enemy. If you're close enough to hit them, you're going to hit them. And that is about it for this devlog. Boy, we have fun, don't we? What was your favorite? I had a lot of fun developing this week. I finally feel like the weapon um, that I have added is suitable to my tastes. There's a few issues with combat in general I would like to fix to make it more fluid and more, um... Mm. Have good feedback to the player to um, when you use when you use combat. So in the in the future updates, I hope to um, sort those out. But I think for now, the best course of action to organically um, view how combat looks or feels in the game before I make any large changes to it is work on the attacks, um, finish off or make a large chunk of. Um, the heavy brace attacks, work on a ranged system, and then once that is done I can um, view how the combat looks and feels at a base level, and I can work on the um, additions to the overhaul of how combat works in general, because at that point I will have the attacks as I like them, and I can, I can more accurately judge how they would look in-game once changing things majorly. Okay, bye.